Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. If you've been following me for a while, you probably know that I documented my recent surgery in six or seven videos, where I went into great detail and I explained what I was feeling at the time during recovery. And I wanna go back now and talk to you about the full experience because I feel like I'm at a place where I have healed enough that I feel like I'm done healing. That being said, I do still have tiny pockets of swelling, but it's nothing that I or anybody else is really going to notice. So if you come back in six months and you look at me again, I'm probably gonna look a little bit different, but it's not so much that it will look like I've had another procedure or something. So because of that, I feel like I'm healed enough to finally wrap this up. So I'm going to walk you through my entire process, starting from the beginning when I was choosing my surgeon all the way until now, okay? So let's start with why I chose Dr. Spiegel. I did go to Dr. Spiegel in Boston. If you recently watched the Gigi Gorgeous documentary, you will know that's the doctor that she went to. L. Bradford here on YouTube also went to Dr. Spiegel. He's done many, many trans women. In fact, he focuses on trans women, not only, but he does have an entire, a, a big a chunk of his clients, like, I don't know how to explain this. He focuses on facial feminization surgery. He doesn't just offer nose drops or something and a trans woman goes to him. He, he specifically caters to trans women, which I think is important because I wanted to go to a doctor that was experienced with people like me. So early on in my YouTube life, I got a comment from another YouTuber, Elle Bradford, who I just mentioned. She said hi to me. I don't know exactly what the conversation was, but we started talking on Skype and we started hanging out. We played video games online. It was cute. We developed a friendship. I don't remember if she's the one that suggested to me. No, you know what? She wasn't. I knew I wanted to get facial feminization organization surgery. Originally, I thought I wanted to get SRS, which uh, is sexual reassignment surgery, which is um, what a lot of people call bottom surgery, which is what a lot of people call the surgery. It's where they change your genitals. I thought I wanted that first. She helped me understand that I wanted FFS first because that was what's going to, was what was going to affect my life more and it was what I was experiencing more dysphoria around. So she helped me understand that and I'm very, very thankful for that because it was absolutely the right choice for me to get FFS first. I had already looked at Dr. Spiegel a little bit. She recommended him because she had gone to him, some of her friends had gone to him, and he looked like he knew what he was doing, and I had looked at some other doctors, but nobody that really, I can't even remember who I looked at, to be honest, because I was so sold on Dr. Spiegel after Elle had kind of talked to me about her experience. I sent an email in with a pre-makeup picture, which I'll put somewhere on the screen here, which at the time was what it looked like without makeup on, and they got back to me within a day or so. It was very quick, and I scheduled a Skype consultation, because I am from Toronto, and Dr. Spiegel operates out of Boston, so I wasn't going to drive there or take a flight just to meet him, that was a bit ridiculous, so we did a Skype consultation. The Skype consultation cost $100, which makes sense because I'm using his time, like it should cost something. And then if you decide to use the, if you decide to go with him with the quote that they quoted you after that consultation, you get that $100 deducted from your surgery cost. So really it ends up flatting, like flatting out if you end up going with him. So it worked out and I ended up going with him. When I knew that that was what I wanted and I had the quote, I decided that it was not going to happen anytime soon with the amount of money that I was making. It would take years, years and years and years, like a decade to save up with what I was making at the time to afford this surgery. So I decided I would try crowdfunding and I was worried at first that people would see it as selfish, um, but I knew that this was something that I needed and that I probably could not have gone another 10 years. It, I really, it, the realization for me is so stark when I go back and look at old videos, even from October, like a few months ago, I look so uncomfortable. I look like I feel so uncomfortable and I didn't feel that way consciously, but the difference between then and now is staggering in the way that I feel like I can express myself in the way that I communicate. No comparison. It's bizarre. So this surgery was absolutely way more about my mental health than it was about looking pretty. It was never about looking pretty. It was about feeling okay. It was about feeling content. And that's exactly how I feel. I feel happy. I feel like I am where I belong. I feel like I belong in this body now. I crowdfunded, it took nine months, which is a very short period of time compared to what I would have, what I was supposed to wait. So we, we raised money from, I think, January until November, which was when I decided to book the surgery. And you guys, you, you made this possible for me. You guys, everybody that watches my videos, everybody that, even if you watch my videos and you didn't donate to the crowdfund, like the crowdfunding campaign, you watching my video with an ad still helps me afford things. So you made this possible for me. Thank you so much. You changed my life forever. I will never forget it. I booked the surgery in September when I had almost as, uh, the, the full amount of the money that I required to book it. And um, I booked it for December 16th and that was it. I was so, I was so excited. My mom and my dad were going to drive me there. My dad would have to go back for work, but he'd come back to drive us back to Canada. So I basically had both of them with me for most of the recovery. So let's just jump into going to Boston. I have not been many places in the States. So this was 
is an exciting road trip for me. My family always likes to do road trips. We like to drive places. It gives us time to bond and to talk, and I have a really great relationship with my family, so it was good. I loved that. I love that part of it. I've still, to this day, never been on a plane. That will probably change very soon, but we liked the drive. It was like a 16-hour drive from where we were to get to Boston. I was staying in a hotel kind of, I don't know, like a 20 minute drive from Dr. Spiegel's office and I wanted to see him after a few days of touristy things and we did our consultation. I have a full half an hour video which you will be able to click on a card to go see that or there's a link in the description box of my full sit down consultation with him the day before surgery. Here, yeah. the bone comes out. Right, you see it? Yep, it's coming of out here, here, here. It's also a little full in here, mm -hmm. creating some, yeah. some contours and shadows that we're not fond of keeping. We want to get rid of those. And we go through the entire process. So what am I getting done? There are five things that I decided to get done. The first one was a mandible contour. This is a jaw and chin reduction. So if you look at my jaw and my chin, it has a much more narrow, pointier shape. Very, very different from what it used to look like. I'm going to put another video beside me here just so you can see the comparison. I'm gonna move over this one. <laughs> and hopefully that will give enough room for me to put a good video in here. But you can see there's definitely a difference in the way that my jaw and my chin looks. The way they do this one is they work from the inside of my mouth. They make three incisions. So one across the front and two along the sides. Next to my gums, not on my, not near the teeth. It doesn't really affect the teeth. And they clamp the mouth open. They go from the inside of your mouth so you have no visible scarring, which is fantastic. The next thing I got done was my forehead uh, reshaping. My forehead reconstruction and that is definitely the most intense surgery that I got done so that is um, they made an incision for me from my ear to ear like right across in my hair that's why I have a tiny little tuft of hair here that um can you kind of see it because it's the only piece of hair that got cut and I was surprised so they vaseline the hair out of the way they make the incision they peel your face down and they work on the bone he didn't shave it down because that could possibly cave my face in so instead I think what he does is he kind of removes the bit of bone and then he reshapes it and puts it back in and he, he, he takes a lot of time doing that though the next thing I got done was a tracheal shave now this is interesting it's been about six or seven weeks since surgery and I honestly can say I feel like my my Adam's apple is larger than it used to be I'm not mad about it and here's why I think what happened was I had to go off hormones for a week, two weeks before surgery and then I couldn't go on them until a week after when I was walking around a lot and I think during that three-week period my body grew my Adam's apple back after surgery because I don't know you know what right now maybe it's not very visible maybe it's just I lost a lot of weight after surgery I did I lost 15 pounds after surgery because I couldn't eat anything I had only to drink liquids for a week and maybe I was like so thin that the little Adam's apple looked really large maybe um, or it could be that it grew back but that's okay because what I can do is in a year or so if there's anything that I'm not satisfied with Dr. Spiegel will redo it I just have to you know get there and pay for my hotel and stuff but he doesn't charge for revisions um one revision which is really really nice in case something is not satisfying so I might end up going back for my tricky shave but I might just not even because it's not a big deal to me it's not the worst we'll see we'll see how I feel later down the line. And then another thing that I got done was a lip lift and a lip augmentation. So the lip augmentation was something I added on and paid for myself. I didn't use crowdfunding money for it. But the lip lift was part of my original plan. And that is where they remove a chunk of skin under your nose. It's kind of like an M shape that kind of goes like the points of the M are in the nostrils and then it kind of, it's sort of like that shape. It's not exact, but it's sort of. And then they take the, the, the edge of where they cut that M and they lift it and stitch it to your nostril. So it literally is lifting the lip up. It's like taking a sheet and pulling it flat. You know what I mean? And that gave me an upper lip that I never had before. I had it, but it was hiding. It was hiding in my mouth and now it's out. And that's really great. Each of the things that I got done were picked because they would feminize my appearance. He also recommended cheek implants, which I ended up not getting. And sometimes I look at my face in the mirror and I'm like, I could use some more volume in my cheeks, but I'm not ruined. It's not, I don't feel that bad about it. It's, that's more of an extra thing to me. It's not like something that would help with dysphoria. It's just like, oh, I wish I had bigger cheeks. So I didn't, I didn't get that one because I really wanted this to be a treatment for my dysphoria. That's why I did it. And that's, that's what I got out of it is a treatment for my dysphoria. I feel way better in every way. So next day, surgery, surgery time. I just remember in the morning feeling really like I was in a dream. It felt like I was in a dream. It didn't quite feel real. It is. Uh, just about six in the morning. It's a little bit before six in the morning. And where's the light? There's the light. Um, I don't feel like I'm awake. Like, I feel like it's not real yet, which is 
on. I just remember when I was wheeling into surgery, I said goodbye to my mom, and apparently, like, she did not cry once, except for when I was gone into surgery. Then she started crying, and like, the nurses were knew it was coming, and they all kind of surrounded her, like, it's okay, it's okay. She's like, it's fine, I'm not gonna cry. And then she just broke down. I was like, oh, cute. I had never had surgery before, so my mom was really worried for me. She trusted the doctor, but she was really worried because I'd never had surgery, so they don't know. And I just remember when I was in, I was wheeled in, and I was laying on like whatever. I don't want to call it a gurney because I think that's for dead people. I was laying on the thing with wheels on it. And I remember it was like five people around me all talking to me at once and they were trying to confuse me and distract me so that I would like not notice that I was falling asleep or something. That's how I felt. That's what I think. Because I just remember they were like, how's the weather? And like somebody else talked to me over here. It was like so much. And then I don't remember anything. I just remember laughing like, oh, these guys are asking me so many questions. And then I just blacked out. And I woke up and I was like, oh, did, like, did they not do the surgery? Because I felt nothing. And then I realized when I tried to move a little bit, I was like, oh, I'm full of drugs, so full of drugs. And then I realized that I did have surgery. It happened, and it was like an instant. I didn't even have, you know when you go to sleep and you wake up, and it feels like there's a bit of time missing? It didn't even feel like that. It just felt like no time had passed. It was bizarre. So anyway, it turned out I was in there for four hours, and um, which is not bad. A friend of mine was in there for seven hours, and then some girls are in there for like half an hour. It depends on what you get done. But I had five things done, so four hours is pretty good. And the doctor went to my mom, and at first, like, he pulled a chair, and he sat down, and my mom was like, oh my god. Like, is he gonna tell me that she's dead? But, you know, he, he was like, no, 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 no. Like, I just worked for four hours on my feet. I have to sit down. <laughs> Which I get. Like, that, this is intense work. You are doing intense manual labor over a person. Like, it's very important, and I can imagine how exhausting it is. So, like, he can sit down. That's okay. And he said everything went perfectly. The forehead is better than you could have ever hoped for. Like, it was perfect. He said that she's gonna love it. And I do. And I, I do. I do at this point. I'm so happy. My mom was really relieved to hear that. And then, and then they came into where I was staying, and I was really groggy. I was really, really high on drugs, um, but I just remember when I saw Dr. Spiegel, I thanked him. I said, thank you. I feel no pain. I feel great. Thank you. I don't remember the words I used, but I just, I was so happy. I immediately felt way better than I did before. I, I just feel like I had the perfect mindset going into surgery, and when I woke up, nothing could possibly have gone wrong. I just felt so good. Everything felt so good. And um, then another kind of nurse came in and helped me with removing my little things. And I remember I was like, no, you can't see my breasts. I was trying to hide my nipples. And my mom was like, no, no, no. She, she just likes to cover her chest. And it was cute. It was cute. Because I was like, I had just had my face ripped off and replaced, basically. And I was like, no, you can't see my areolas. It was so silly. Anyway, then they wheeled me across the hospital. Oh, actually, when I first, when they were starting to talk to me, I was talking a little bit and I thought I was gonna throw up and I was like oh no I can feel it coming it really felt like there was something solid coming out right and I was like oh my god I'm gonna throw up and they gave me a little bucket and then I just burped really loud it was not vomit it was just air because um to do the trachea shave he had put a camera down my throat so we could see exactly where he was cutting so he wouldn't overdo and like injure my voice my voice my voice so I had a lot of air and a lot of gas in my throat and it felt like I was throwing up but nothing happened I, did, I didn't throw up once after after surgery so he wheels uh not he the nurses my mom they wheel me across the hospital I get a room a private room with a great view but I couldn't really see it because I couldn't turn my head and look to the side but whatever it was pretty and everything was all snowy it felt very clean I actually would have stayed in that hospital for a week it was fantastic I had a nurse uh, several nurses come to me throughout the whole time and they were all wonderful so helpful so nice to me and I just remember feeling like really happy. I was just like, these people are so kind. I was probably a little bit high, and maybe that's why. But I had no pain. I'm telling you right now, from right after surgery until now, I have not felt one second of pain that I have not been able to deal with, or that I have thought was worse than stubbing my toe. Not once. The swelling wasn't that bad, so I started recording. About two hours after I woke up, I was recording and I was eating applesauce and I was I was generally pretty good. And my mom was really shocked at how fast I was bouncing back. The reality is, after a surgery like this, the first day is pretty easy. The worst of it is day three. All of the pain I'm experiencing is under my jaw and in my throat. And um, only one eye is swollen, and I'll show you that. So just view more, and it looks really grass, but it's right there. Wow. That's so hot. Again, I just want to let you guys know, I'll be putting cards to the other videos that I did that are way more detailed in what I was feeling in the moment throughout this video and links in the description box if you want to see each day as it goes because it's way, way more detailed than I'm getting into here. After I, I, I slept, I slept in the hospital one night. The next day, Dr. Spiegel came in. He took off my bandages. He showed my mom how to redo them. He let me see in the mirror my forehead and my chin and I started crying because I was just so, it was exactly what I wanted because 
the first, like the second day, the swelling isn't that bad. It's a little bit, but he could still see the general shape and the differences. And he was like, look, you can look at it. And I, I was just so happy. I didn't sob, I didn't go like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? But I just, I, might, I had tears coming out of my eyes and I was just so happy. I, I didn't even want to look at it because it, I was like so in awe of how good I felt. I just wanted to just feel it. It was such a great feeling. It was so good. I wish I could go back and feel that again. I really do. And then he was like, you're good to go. You're good to go. He showed my mom to replace the bandage and you're good to go. So we left the hospital like two hours later. Um, they let me go to the hospital. Uh, I was only there for one night, which is pretty good. And now I'm going back to the hotel. And gonna heal the rest of the way there. So, good time. And then we stayed in the hotel for the full week. My mom was incredible. My mom was so great with me. Everybody thought she was a nurse in the, in the vlogs because she's like so good at taking care of people who are wounded. It's like incredible. She changed my bandages for me every day. She helped me uh, wash my incisions and everything. And I could have probably done some of this stuff by myself, but it was so much easier with her help. And you know, like I, I didn't need to do it myself, so why would I? It was just so much easier with her there. And I'm so happy and so thankful that she came to help me. Um, and it's an experience that I never want to replace. When I was watching Gigi's documentary about her whole entire life basically but she did a whole there was a big chunk on her FFS and her dad was with her and I could tell that that experience was really good for her dad to come around to accepting her and to understanding her more and my mom already was really great but something similar happened where it's like a whole nother level of understanding it's great oh my god you know what I forgot to mention I feel like such an asshole holy shit my brother and his wife my good friend both came to see me uh, the day of my surgery so like when they wheeled me to my my private hospital room my brother and his wife just appeared out of nowhere I was like what it was great I, I didn't do that because I couldn't really move my mouth that much but like I felt that it was great it was such a nice surprise and I'm just so thankful that I have such a wonderful family Ah! Anyway, my brother and his wife stayed for a few days, um, helped entertain me, helped take care of me, and that was great. I really, really like that. I'm seeing them again soon. I'm so excited. Anyway, the time in the hotel room recovering was pretty standard throughout. The worst day was day three for swelling, and I'm going to, like, you can see, I was just blimped. I was inflated. I looked like somebody had injected my face full of saline. Like, it looked a mess. Oh, my God. I have to do that sucking sound to keep myself from drooling because my lip is so big. But I knew that was going to happen. I was told by everybody, day three is the worst. And it was. And it was pretty much just maintenance and staying and, and seeing, you know, things swell down and get good and... Whatever. And so, I got the one that you bought. One of the things I'm drinking is this smoothie. It's like green goodness. I send farms bullshit. Yummy though. It tastes good. Not only it's in green smoothie. Oh, be careful, honey. <laughs> oh, I have to take this off, whatever. Yeah. Let's just take the bandage okay. off. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. If my face falls off, then... Your face won't fall off, Katie. Okay. Alright. Gentle. Are you yeah. doing okay? It didn't hurt yet. Just... No. I'm going to be very gentle. Finally, we got tape that sticks. Is it going to stick too hard? No. I just want to be very careful. Uh-huh. It sticks to my hands and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Just gonna go nice and slow. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's one off, baby. Okay. Now, use a towel if you feel like you need it. Um, mm -hmm. I think you're okay. We got this, don't we? We got more, more advantages to it in corner after, right? Oh yeah, yep. Okay. Oh, that feels nice. There you go. I think we can leave it off for a bit today because we're not near any um, other germs and stuff like that. Look at that done. beautiful forehead. I can't really see. <laughs> it looks great. I feel like we'll start doing that. That'll be Star Wars sweet. alien That'll sandwich. Be sweet. It's gross. Well, I think once um, the lip goes down yeah. even once more. Once I can close my mouth, I can yeah. start doing that. That's okay. But I haven't closed my mouth for four days. Try to get this tape off so we can 
Yeah, you're good. Do you have no damages after this too? What, honey? Do you have no damages after this? Oh, one? yeah. Okay. That, that's it. I, I want. Like, they gave us everything we need. Uh -huh. And Dr. Spiegel, when he phoned, said if you need anything, just to let them know. Yeah. Uh, also, guys, I slept really good last night for the first time since best, surgery. The best. I slept yeah. for 12 hours. And um, no pain meds. No pain meds for 12 hours either. Well, I took some at 10.30. I didn't take them again until 12.30 again. So Yeah. They were in effect for a few hours, but I didn't feel that bad. So that was kind of nice. And you woke up nice and alert. And yeah. Looking good, My honey. My forehead is so smooth. It's amazing. Your forehead is gorgeous. Yeah. Oh. Are you okay? Slow. Sorry, honey. It's okay. I can see a little bit um, of what? pretty colors of bruising. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of, you know, we expect that, right? So. Yeah. I think it must feel like a relief to get this oh, off for it a does. few minutes. It kind of does, but it also almost feels like it has the power to sag. Yeah. So it, it's we'll relieving it. and it's also a little bit painful. Okay, how's the incision look? Just a minute, I can get time to look at it. Oh, I got so much facial hair. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yep. Don't worry about that. Like, I do believe the swelling's gone down a lot. Yeah? Yeah. It has. You're so strong. It's, it's not bad. Yeah. It's not bad. No? I really want to show you. I know, honey, but you can't yet. I know. Day five. I have glasses now, which is really nice because it was getting really frustrating not being able to see. You can take it off. Okay. Um, cause like what happens really is you're deprived of all of your senses. With the pain meds you can barely feel anything and then like with your mouth all full and you can't really taste good food that you want to taste. Oh wow, that looks nice. The other one's already off. So. Uh, yeah. My other hand is shell asleep and I fell off and I sleep, which is kind of, we should do it tighter. Yeah, we time. will. Yeah. Um, wow, this looks so bad. That's okay. Uh, so there's that and then I didn't, I couldn't wear contact lenses so I couldn't see. And I'm already hard of hearing, so I had like no, all of my senses are like, like really dulled. So it's nice to be able to see really well again. It's, it's nice to have that. I think you're nervous and that's okay. Oh, my face can feel off. Oh, your face can feel off. No. That's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it won't. Honey. Why? Your face won't peel off because not only is it sewn on the outside is sewn on the inside. How do you know that, that today I'm gonna try to shave because I'm too impatient to wait for my dad and I really don't like the facial hair at all obviously. He'll be here tomorrow. So. Yeah but I don't want to wait that long. I know. Yeah. It's your phone. Where is it? The thing is with the hair is it's so coarse, like I've told you guys a hundred times, it's so coarse that it catches on the bandage and then I feel every centimeter of my face underneath the bandage. Wow. So it actually hurts more if I don't shave. Uh, so I'm gonna try to shave. Okay. By day seven, I think my forehead was pretty much ace. It had a bit of swelling, so my skin looked like perfectly smooth. It was kind of cute, um, but that went down too. So my skin isn't perfectly smooth anymore, but that's okay. This is really tight. Oh, wow. Was it too tight? No, 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 it just, it feels crazy to have that off now. Yeah, I think get a break from it for a while today. Well, I'm gonna take a bath today, I think. Yeah. No, I'm not supposed to soak any incisions, but um, the closest incision to bath water is gonna be this. And I think it's sealed, to be honest, but I'm just gonna leave it out of the water anyway. Oh my god, this is so matted. Oh. It's okay. Yeah, like I can't really feel it. I mean, my whole scalp is pretty much numb, but the only feeling I have is really from, from the incision forward. Um, and every time she pulls one out, it feels like a little pinch, but it's definitely nothing that you can't handle. You'll be fine. And that's that. Uh, and I, I, after day seven, I went back home to my parents' house. And um, I stayed there for two weeks, recovering. I slowly started eating more solid foods. After about a week and a half, I could eat most solid foods. I couldn't eat anything that you really had to crunch and chew. Um, I remember Christmas dinner, I could eat everything, but I had to really take my time. I love bread, I love carbs, and there were dinner rolls at this dinner, Christmas dinner. And so I had two dinner rolls, but it took me 10 minutes to eat a dinner roll. 10 minutes, guys. What? It takes me 30 seconds normally, I just inhale it. 
I just breathe like Kirby and it just gets in my mouth. So that was an experience. But I think that's also part of why I lost so much weight after was because I couldn't eat like I normally do. And I love eating, okay? I'm not like, I'm kind of glad I lost that weight, but I'm pretty sure I gained it all back now and I'm not, I don't even care. I don't even care because I got like, I got them thighs, you know? I'm happy about it. It's fine. It was really great being around my family when I was so vulnerable because it gave me a level of trust. Like, I've always trusted my family. I've always loved my family. But, like, I'm talking about extended family, too. Like, my grandmother, my cousins, stuff like that, aunts and uncles. Um, it just... I, I didn't have the energy to try. So it was just very raw. Um, and it allowed me to just connect with people on another level. Because I couldn't not... I was just so open and so vulnerable that I just, that's what happened. And that's great. I'm very happy about that. And now we're here. I'm just like, every time I look at my face, it's just, I'm just really happy. Um, I never thought I would feel this way. I never thought I didn't feel this way. It's really hard to explain, but even like before, when I didn't know I was transgender, I never under, I never knew that what I was feeling was not normal. And now that I had this done and I feel so much better, I never knew what I was feeling was so heavy. You know, I feel so much lighter. I feel like a feather. I just I feel so good. And it's, I just, I'm so thankful to all of you that watch me, that comment, that donated. But even if you didn't donate, like literally every single one of you made this possible for me. Every single one of you supported me through this. You made me feel strong. You made me feel like it was possible. And I love you so much. I just want to do one more side by side comparison if it's working properly. So you can see exactly how different I look. So the, this video over here is my 11 months on estrogen video, which was the first FFS video because in that video I talked about my consultation with Dr. Spiegel, my Skype consultation. The lack of makeup and the, the lightness of my makeup here is intentional so I could see very clearly how different things are. And I hope you guys can see it very clearly because I feel it very clearly. I'm just so relieved and you know if any of you are looking into getting facial feminization surgery or any cosmetic surgery that's going to make you feel so much better about yourself and feel so much lighter and feel so much more alive, do as much research as you can. Know what doctor you're picking is the one for you because you know what there's no such thing as the best. Everybody does different things so just make sure the doctor you're picking is the one for you, the best for you and just you know what work so hard to make that a reality for you. If you guys have crowdfunding campaigns for your own kind of other any medical need, I, I like to retweet them on Twitter, I like to, to signal boost them. Feel free to post them in the comments below. You made it possible for me, I want to help you with making it possible for you. And I can't donate to every single one of you, that's not possible, I'm not rich. YouTubers at my level don't make as much money as you think they do, but I want to help you with what I can, so please let me signal boost for you. <laughs> tweet me with your links, I'll retweet as much as is reasonable, but I will retweet you. I love you, and I want you to get what you need to make your life better. With all that being said, let me just go through like a quick recap, a quick recap, real quick. I've never felt better in my entire life. I made the right decision on every level, on every account. I didn't feel one ounce of pain throughout this entire experience. Every single person that I interacted with was an angel. When I said I wanted to record this, I said I would record the good, the bad, and the ugly. I said I'm going to keep it really real. If anything is bad or if I'm being a bitch, I'm going to show you that. But really, I was only a little bit irritable once and nobody made me feel that way. It was like a perfect experience and I didn't really, I don't want to create the illusion that everybody's going to have that experience. I I thought really it was gonna be way harder and I wanted people to understand how hard it was, but it was not. It was not. The hardest part was waiting for me and that's not gonna be true for everybody, but my experience was incredible and I really hope this helps people see the power of procedures like this and the necessity of it for transgender people because I cannot imagine living like I was before. Three months ago, I didn't even realize how bad it was. But I can't imagine feeling like that anymore. It's such a weight lifted off my shoulders. I'm just so happy. And thank you guys so much for making this possible. I'm going to go before this ends up being literally half an hour. <laughs> thank you so much. I love you so much. You mean the world to me. Until next time, just remember you have the power to change lives. And you did. And you can do it again. And I can't wait to see you do it. So I will see you later so much. Oh my god, I can't even speak English. What the up? I love you so much. Bye. Ooh, ow, girl.